my number one question for people what were the popular shoes when you were in middle school and high school what were the popular backpacks and then what is a popular like random style in honor of the fact that cherry emoji twitter has co-opted this film i thought we would, we would take a look at this cinematic masterpiece <laughs> This opening scene was a lot, and when I first got the VHS, when it first came out, I was like, this is weird as hell, I don't like this, I don't think that this is what I thought this movie would be. It starts out with the protagonist, Evan Rachel Wood, Tracy, and Vanessa, let them die, Hudgens. Yeah, people are gonna die, which is terrible, but like, inevitable? Who plays Noelle, her nerdy friend. And they're just like two regular 13 year olds, like two normal kids who look like kids, hair and pigtails. So cute. I never noticed this, but her mom fixes her underwear so she doesn't get a wedgie. Like, her mom knows she's gonna be a dweeb. I gotta respect that. And it's shot in LA, and it's set in LA, and it just looks so good. So this is Mason, her brother, that she meets at school. And you can kind of see, I thought that he was cool when I was little and I would watch this, but I'm realizing he's probably more like closer to burnout. Mason. Hey, um, guys, this is my little sister. Hi. Like smoker kids, like pothead kids. Not necessarily like cool and popular. And then walks Evie Zamora. Look And then there's Evie Zamora. Looks like she grew up this summer. No shit. What's poppin' with you, girl? They're like, we have to have somebody say something in Ebonics so that you can know it's bad. They're like, keep it black. Every black thing, let's key in on that. <laughs> we find out that Tracy lives with her single mom um, and her brother. Her mom is a at-home hairstylist, giving the worst dye job. Like, obviously I get the look that they're going for, but girl, the, the execution is not there. And then how about the kids eat all of their lasagna, their poor, and their customers, and they're gonna eat the lady food for a two dollar tip. You look great with some honey blonde entertainment streak. The words entertainment streaks, this is such an old ass movie. Like that was old mom language back then, but right now, golly. Can you imagine you don't get attention from your parents and you're trying to read them? You're like, this is my creative expression from the depths of my heart. Mom, take a listen. And this person bursts through your door because your mom doesn't have boundaries and doesn't know how to tell people no. Can you f imagine? She's pissed. You could see it in her eyes. It's not even that she's mad. It's just, it's so heartbreaking. Tracy was a big head genius. You could hear it. He was crippled, but only his body was cracked. It's not simple, nor is it an easy matter to explain. So this is where you learn that Tracy's deep. She reads her mom a poem from school and you're like, damn, this kid's deep. She's got a lot going on in that head up there. Dressed like a Powerpuff girl, but she's got a lot to her. But yeah, you're picking up on the fact that her mom has no boundaries. Her mom's friend gets to come over here with her kid running around the house, even though they are running a household with children as well. It's just so chaotic. It works if you work it, right, baby? It works if you work it, so then you know that she's in recovery, you know? They put that in there so that you can be like, oh, she's in recovery and so is her friend. That's how they know each other. Okay, this part I love, popular kid folklore. Did you guys have that at your high school and middle school, popular kid folklore, where it's like everybody knows that Johnny's has a twin sister that goes to a different school. It's like all the information that anybody could get on like the popular kids would be like spread around school and be like something that everybody knew about. And it would just change from person to person. The most pivotal scene in the entire film, all it took was for someone to rip her ass up, talk about you look like a Cabbage Patch Kid, and this shifts Tracy's entire future and destiny. 
And that's why I really, really love this film because it doesn't do the stupid hacky like, I'm gonna do a dance routine in the middle of the cafeteria and diss you at lunch today. Like, that's not how people bully. It meant nothing to the girl to say it to Tracy, but it changes Tracy's whole future. That that girl called her a Cabbage Patch Kid. And that's literally what it's like. That's like the reality of girlhood and bullying and interpersonal hostility from um, girls. And I hate watching movies where they don't do that. I hate watching movies where they're like, oh, the way that the girl gets bullied is everybody wears matching outfits and has like quotes that they say and they do it in a row and it's like all this stupid shit. Like that's not how kids bully. So then Tracy goes with her mom and they pick up some new clothes so that Tracy cannot be a Couch Patch Kid. Tracy said, I'm cool too. I'm doing a shirt. Uh, I think I the like this. Okay. Cute shirt. Thanks. Keep up. To me, it's obvious in this scene that Evie pulled her card and knows, you know what I mean? That Tracy's desperately trying to fit in with her, and that's why she's inviting her to, like, play her. It's the best day of this bitch's life, though. Look. Best day of her life. Oh my god, yes! Like, Ma, is it that serious? I could say something about the racialized divide between good and evil in this film and who the good kids are and who the bad kids are and what they look like, but we'll save that for later. You already knew that's what was gonna happen. You already knew it was gonna say a number you have reached. Could not be in service. Yeah, I bet it can't. You think that girl gave you her phone number? You cabbage patch kid? You dweeb? It didn't happen. Humiliating. This would have devastated any other teenage character, but Tracy said. I'm gonna freak out, I'm gonna redirect my energy, and I'm gonna resolve this. Cause she said, clearly Tracy wants to be cool and wants to fit in and wants to be accepted at school, which is why she one, went out and bought new clothes after getting roasted, two, came to school in them and followed and tracked down the popular girl to show them like, I've corrected how I look. Like she desperately wants to fit in, so of course she's gonna make a way when nobody thought she could. The girls didn't believe in Tracy, my good sis, look at her. She said, I'll die for this. I'll die for this. Imagine the way she laid her life on the line. The store in this part of the film looks like it's a Spencer's type of store, but like on Melrose. Hey, I'm calling you guys, but I was coming here anyway. Okay. You like those, right? So she really played in Tracy's face and like said to her directly, like, I gave you a fake phone number, you're a dumbass. And then Tracy shortly finds out after that they're stealing in there and they came there to steal and commit crimes. Shit, guys, <laughs> Criminal activity. Again, you always think like, okay, well she'll just give up now. Like she'll just move on with her life because she can take no for an answer most iconic scene in the film. This is how I first saw it. I turned the channel onto this scene. The first time I ever saw this, I turned the channel right onto this scene of Tracy. Sort of, uh, high five three number or Alberto, I don't know, something. No, you just keep in mind that you work for me. Sitting next to this lady, business lady on the phone and stealing her entire wallet to give it to people who have just bullied her Twice in a row, no less. <laughs> I was like, what is this film? I need to know what this is. This is such an iconic scene. It's like, what are you willing to do to become popular? And this girl literally was like anything. She made her poor mom buy clothes for her. She came, even though the girl gave her a phone, fake phone number, and she stole money for this girl that is bullying her into the friendship. It's like, I hate that kind of dynamic where one person looks down on their quote unquote friend and they're like, you're whack but I have you with me for my self-esteem or whatever. Like, that's so weird. It shows signs of insecurity, like deep insecurity on both ends. Mom? Honey, he just got back. He's only coming for dinner. Yeah, tomorrow he's just gonna turn up your car, right? So, Brady, how's the halfway house? 
The same as the last one, Jackson. I love that. He said, bitch, you thought. She said, who is that? Who is she? I don't know her. It took her one day to abandon her whole friend group. I'm gonna eat some more. Yeah, I know. I'm Noelle. That's so fuck. Imagine someone said that to you. Yeah, I know. I'm Noelle. Like, super creepy. But giving very much realistic nerd energy. Like, yes, I know the whole life story of every popular person, and the popular people don't even know their names. They said, is there some black people on screen? It's time to get negative. Literally every single time there's black people on screen, a black person's voice, <laughs> a black person thinking, the color, a black trash can on screen, every single time that's when the bad things happen or when Tracy falls deeper and deeper into this like chaotic world. It happens to only be like when they're in the hip hop playing store with the black cashier that they're stealing and then the first time Tracy does drugs, it's like because they black people. I'm pretty sure they dropped acid here. But then it's also like, oh, look at these black men trying to get on. Like, oh, the theory I could develop about this film. Like, you know that they're really bad girls because their boyfriends are just like regular white boys from their school. They're black boys. Oh my God, it's so scary now. Giving very much that. I don't care if it's based on the true story. It's still giving very much that. That was a cinematic decision that they chose to make. And that's a way of framing it. I'm like, this is my favorite movie also. It's so <laughs> And like, it's obvious to the mom and the boyfriend that Tracy's high here. Run, Tracy, Tracy, you haven't been for two weeks for this damn game. No, I haven't. I don't think they really knew what to do, which is so awkward. <laughs> Well, I'm not allowed to see your body anymore. No, you're not. Of cutting, it's like she's cutting the cord for real. Like, no, you can't know what my body looks like because now she's taking full ownership of her identity and not just like how she was raised. She's like, I'm seeking out into the world. I'm venturing out and developing my own sense of self, not connected to my mommy. That's like the symbol of it throughout the film. She's like, no, you can't see my body. No, you can't see my body. Self-care is officially over, ladies. We're doing drugs again. Hey, Mason. Move your jeans string down south. Yeah. No, that is so gross. That's my brother. This iconic ass scene. <laughs> Walks into school late with Starbucks. And why are you late, Miss Freeland? Sorry, can I go to the bathroom? Now she getting slick at the mouth in class, bitch. You are a nerd. You are a dweeb. It's really not your place. And then the creepy tongue piercing scene happens. I don't want to talk about that. I really don't. And thus starts the physical transformation of Tracy. Her, it's like her transformation completes when she completely looks different. It reflects her behavior. And like as she continues to have more ownership of her body and like change more how she looks, it like her behavior like increases with it. Can you guys say hi? Huh? That was Mason's favorite shirt. Keeping proud of yourself through DIYing, sisters. Yeah, that's weird. I thought I had a bunch of 20s in here. I'm gonna have to write you a check. I don't know. Put me next time. But that's wealth to not know how much money you had in your pocket. Brooke had a convention in Bakersfield. She said she sent you an email. I'm sorry, Mo. I hope it's okay that I'm here. This is where I can hurt worse than at home. I don't give a shit. It's good. Another iconic piercing scene that's really, really stupid. If you ever pierce your own belly button yourself, like... You was doing too much like I would never do that. I would never do that October 2018 at a prison abolition party upstairs on a couch with dog hair on it. I would never do that. So, yep, it's very weird to pierce your own belly button and not do it by a professional. I would never do that. Trace, it's cool that you're not scared of needles. Like I said, the more piercing she gets, the more her like... Okay, so it's like the key point. I mean, this seems obvious, but the key point of the movie is that she's Tracy's initial way of transforming into this person happened because somebody roasted her for her socks essentially. So when she got the socks comment, her world view shifted and she felt like she had to immediately make a change and it was with how she looked. And as she sinks further and further deeper into this lifestyle, like I said before, her looks change and change and change. So it went from not wearing baby socks to wearing the outfit that she bought from 
her mom's friend in the van, to wearing Evie Zamora all black clothes, to getting more piercings and things like that. Like it's gonna progress and progress throughout the film and that's like one of the themes of the film. I've got a surprise. I start on the leopard fur. He's in tight, Mel. Thanks. It only costs six bucks. Mom. Don't go in my room without asking me again, okay? Those are my favorite jeans. And I don't just waltz into your room and screw around with stuff. When have you ever seen this with anything that was yours? Mom! Imagine your mom made you your dream jeans. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to work to pay for them or guilt your parents into buying them for you and you're mad. Like she just feels out of control of her life. So she doesn't want her mom messing with her shit because that's one more thing out of her control. I'm like, I kind of felt that and I can't be mad at her. It's just... And again, another scene where it's like, you could tell that something bad is happening because there's a black person. She's like leaving the house to go hook up with a black boy. I'm gonna invite the KK. What, do you wanna come? Yeah, it's just gonna be me and KK. Like, bitch, why did you ask if she wants to come just to say it's gonna be me and KK? Like, sick, I'm glad you and KK enjoy your time. KK, he can't even have a name. Like, his name can't just be like Jonathan or Malcolm. His name has to be KK. They're like, just so you know, he's black. Like, if it wasn't clear that he's black, he's black. Classic, iconic scene. Okay. All of a sudden, Medina has a ghetto booty. I think she's sucks. Yeah. That what ain't got shit compared to these, these double cheeseburgers. cheeseburgers. Shake it, don't Shake break, it, break it. it. <laughs> oh, another black person. I wonder how this is gonna go. I wonder how he's gonna contribute to their lives and what he's gonna teach them. You know. Like the symbolism is clear. They're like black, you know, like dark, you know, like negative, you know, like black people are from hell. Like every time a black person enters their life, bad things happen, you know? Um, and then this part is toxic friendship. I literally have experienced this. He asked Tracy out, why is Evie coming over? Like, oh, she'll be with me. Let's, you take my phone number. She's trying to have control over Tracy's future because she wanted to get chose. And Evie, you didn't get chose. Like, that's life. I'll go to my place. My aunt says only one friend at a time. Come on, okay? I'm sorry, Astrid. Let me call my mom. Fine. So now the irony, the way Tracy got into the friendship with Evie is through Astrid, I guess her name is. And now Astrid got rejected. This is the nut that Evie lives with. Honey, can you get me another beer? Yeah. Hey, no more than one, you got no more. She's asking a child to grab her a beer, which like, I know people my age and older, that's normal for us, but this is not. <laughs> That's not what kids are supposed to do. And obviously they're gonna take some. No more than one, you've got homework. Bitch, are you out of your mind? There's seven. Oh my gosh, Tracy doing drugs? I wonder what race the people are that she's doing them with. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be more black people? That's crazy. It's almost like all bad things in life come from black people. <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> and they rap. Do you see how involved they are in black culture? You know what I mean? I'm not saying that like it's unreasonable that in LA black kids would get some goofy white kids into drugs or that they would also be people that do it or are part of their scene. I'm just saying it's just from a film theory perspective, you would you could argue that this film is just based on the fact that everything negative happens when black people are around, which means like themes. So it could mean like if it was black clothes and I wasn't even black people, you would make like a, you could argue through theory like, oh, whenever there are black clothes in the scene, something negative happens. Or like whenever somebody wears red lipstick, somebody dies soon after. So the first time Tracy is sexually active as far as we know, of course, it's when she's with a black boy, but whatever. And because of Evie, Tracy's introduced into the, like the more sexually promiscuous lifestyle. And then she says the stupidest shit. Oh my god, this infuriated me when I was younger. I was like, are you dumb? If everybody marries someone from a different race, then in one generation there'd be no prejudice. You really believe that? You can't, you can't believe that, love. It's not possible. I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. Let's not talk about it. Okay, again, popular girl lore. You can see Evie's scars on her back. And obviously Evie showed her that for a reason. And then this next scene I really don't want to talk about because it's gross. So I'm gonna get on my phone and I'm gonna 
text my friends and go on Twitter because I don't want to talk about this. It's gross. Tracy lost all respect to her neighborhood because she yelled at her mom. More people taking advantage of mom, stepping all over her. Thought we'd just crash it for just a couple days, just until my check comes in. <coughs> I think I'm coming down with Dr. Theory or something, so. Sure. We're not open hotel, mom. You know, I need to get paid for all this. Yeah, they're stealing, by the way. They're still stealing. Wow. Where'd all this stuff come from? I thought it from us. The way she can't lie to save her life is just so powerful. Brooke bought it for me, us, everybody in the world. You could say you stole this, sis. Iconic chicken scene. Yeah. <laughs> Zen chicken. Okay, see the further transformation? Now Tracy has cornrows and like dreadlock looking hair in the back. <laughs> One, she looks like Evie because that was her whole intention was to like transform into Evie. That's like the ultimate stage. Just Evie's a moral junior, but um, she's just transforming her whole life. Her behavior is completely different. Her interests are different. She's not driven by school. Uh oh, is there some more black people? How are they framed? Multidimensionally? I feel like hope is something. I feel like hope is something. I feel like hope is something. Hey, 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 hey. I feel like hope is something, so keep the speakers bump. Oh, wow, that's crazy. How are you guys doing tonight? You guys having fun? You know, I got my ass beat when I was the other night. Oh, yeah? She says, I got my ass beat. Who would beat her ass? Nobody beats her. Like, what is she talking about? Like Tracy's such a follower and she shouldn't be. Okay, this is this the scene that symbolizes the full transformation to another person. Back that ass up. Back that ass up. I'd like to see that thong to my bedroom floor. Tracy? Awkward as shit. Hey Tracy. Use the coast. I didn't pay for the name. Probably, Probably didn't have to with your fine ass. <laughs> Full transformation to another person to the degree that her brother doesn't recognize her and hits on her. Blech. This scene is cinematic masterpiece. I cannot explain to you if you've never done, if you've never been, the, the feeling without this scene. The coloring, the music, the editing. Goodbye. The way it's captured, you can literally feel yourself inside there. Helpless. The hypersensitivity to light, color grading. This is so genius. And then this creepy demon, creepy demon, so ugly, who also has like fake dreadlocks or like braids, I don't remember, tries to sexually harass Tracy. Evie, Evie is hyper and clearly just hooked up with Javi. So Evie the whole time was just trying to get to Javi herself, whether it was to take him from Tracy and like assert her dominance or if it's just she's hyper and she has no control over herself, whatever it is, she's planning on doing that the entire time. So Evie's not even a good friend. You don't want me to cook for you anymore? Fine, then don't eat my food. Fine, I hate your nasty store brand food anyway. Great! I hate your nasty store brand food anyway. <laughs> Bitch, and buy your own. What you stealing clothes for? Just steal a meal. You mad as fuck. That's so embarrassing. And then her mom rips up the floor. So awkward. Imagine you walk in on someone doing that shit. I'd be like, yo, I'm gonna go actually. This is when it gets a little bit sad because Tracy really is like completely out of control in every aspect, like in her life she's out of control and then at her house there is nothing under control so sis is just left out in the dust. Something feeding your bed. Right, we'll change the sheets here. Nice and tight. You have to lay off the head. Do you tell me what to do, you fucking cokehead? You're such a loser. Do you think I'm gonna help you out? Do you just cuss me out? It's not gonna happen, love. You be mad, you sleep in your pissy bed. Mad as shit. 
I really like this perspective because when you see like coming of age films, I feel like you don't always see the popular kid or the bad kid's parents navigating that in a way that's meaningful. It's usually like sit down dinner type of conversations. You don't really see the behind the scenes of how much it breaks a parent to have to raise a kid that's like struggling with getting through things and acting out. Evie, honey, do you have a friend that you could go and stay with for a few days? I think his family needs some alone time. So yeah. I'm the one that's here every day trying to make the situation better. This outright lie, I'm here trying to make the situation better. Literally in what way, in what material way has she made anything better in the house? Like just straight lying. She's a psychic. Cynthia, do you remember when you tried to bring back Grandma to Hampton and ended up poking your leg? Ruff, <laughs> ruff, <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> She didn't have to say started humping your leg, roof, roof. You want me to model my new thong? It's perfect for pooping on the go. What's that on your shirt? I need business. Speak up, I can't hear you. It's a belly button ring! How else can I say it? I don't speak no other languages. How else can I say it? I don't speak no other languages. Oh, you wanna know what that is? That is a tongue ring. She doesn't want to open up the transformation, the physical manifestations of her complete personality shift. Did a full 180. Like, literally did a full 180. 2,000 years ago. I'm a mommy. I'm born 2,000 years ago. What? And, like, her mom kept asking, like, I can't see your body. You don't want me to see you naked anymore. Like. No bra. No pants. No bra. No pants. No bra. No, 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 no panties. The psychosis. Whoever wrote this is a wildin' because this is such a random line and such a weird thing for someone to say, but it really like encapsulates the chaos that's going on. Like literally no one, your 13 year old that's acting out, no bra, no panties. Like girl, what are you talking about? Like where does she come up with that? She's a nut. I just love that the film tells the story throughout it instead of having this weird like expository like narrative where every single time something happens or is changing or is a circumstance that it has to be like explained with lines like the new boyfriend and Tracy's father like passing each other said so much more than being like hello um Tracy's mom's old boyfriend that I don't like and have it's like you don't have to get all of that out the film just like makes the point for the audience hey Right. Super nuanced things throughout this film create such world shifts. And that's the reality of being a teenager. When you're a teenager, everything is not this huge grandstanding like someone standing up on the cafeteria table yelling at you and doing a cheer about how stupid you are in unison with everybody and then everybody in the whole cafeteria turns around and looks at you. It's literally a passing comment that drives you into like drinking and drugs and experimenting with sex when you're 13. You know, because that passing comment triggered anxiety or trauma or whatever that's happening in the home, in their past, in their lives, etc. So, like, that's why I really appreciate this film. It's so much more realistic than just being like, oh, I had a direct transgression, like, my best friend and I broke up as friends, and then I went down this spiraling drink. It's like, no. It's literally just like, she was insecure and nerdy and wasn't being heard and wasn't getting attention and someone bullied her one time and now she wanted to fit in with them wait today's the due date you guys could have called to remind me that today's the due date and left you a bunch of messages not to mention a note on your locker tracy tomorrow you gotta sit down and do all your homework um maybe you could get an no else she called a couple of times you know i know mom i know you guys could have called to remind me that today's the due date so you could see now Tracy starts spiraling like crazy, like falling down and down and down, like in her grades. And like, this is so realistic that she's just like, oh my God, nobody told me the due date for this. Like she has no ability to take personal responsibility for her own. Like bitch, you wasn't coming to school. Who was going to tell you the due date? You're not in class. She went from being like a top student in all her classes to you guys didn't tell me the due date of the biggest project of the school year. That's crazy. Whoops. You just want to go to the boardwalk and sell some shit? I can't. Um, I'm late for my biology, actually. No. We're doing play. And, and I'm a um, mermaid. Yes, I'm a mermaid scene. So pivotal and so important in the film because it shows you, like, Tracy is falling so deep into this that she has absolutely no control of her life to the degree that the people that were in this lifestyle before her are, like, more responsible than her. 
can't even remember how to spell photographer. Another huge pivotal scene is them dropping off Evie at Brooke's house and Evie feeling abandoned once again and that being a huge catalyst to Tracy's further descent and depression. It's just so dramatic how something so simple as like saying you have to go home and not live at our house anymore and be in a sleepover phase switches everything. So you're not gonna adopt me now? Evie, I mean... Brooke's back, so... <laughs> okay, yeah, long story short, because I don't want to, like, review the last tail end of it, but, like, the whole point is, like, because they gave Evie back since Brooke was back in town, which is the reason Evie said she had to stay with Tracy, because they gave Evie back, Evie cuts Tracy off. People are coming up to Tracy, threatening her. We heard what Evie said about you. Like, we know what you did. And it's all bullshit. It's all lies that Evie's making up because she's trying to completely ostracize and isolate Tracy. She's like, you're cut off. You're out of the family. You're not in the in-group. You're now kicked out, kicked to the curb. And she's trying to turn everyone against her. She's so malicious and vindictive and immature and Tracy realizes that when she drives off past her and doesn't pick her up after school doesn't return her phone calls just like completely cuts her off at school so Evie has effectively ruined this little girl's life and then won't even return her phone calls yikes so embarrassing then they set up an intervention for these girls my favorite part is that Evie literally sits there and like pegs it all on Tracy, which is like, it shows that Evie was never a true friend to her, but like obviously it's a toxic friendship where there's like imbalanced power dynamics to begin with. It was so obvious in the beginning that it was never gonna be beneficial for Tracy in the same way it was for Evie. Evie got a free place to live, free meals all the time. She was, had so many people to steal from so that she could keep buying and selling drugs and stuff. It's just like, what did Tracy get out of this? She's failing out of every class <laughs> she has. A, She's being looked upon, frowned upon in her neighborhood by her peers. Like, she's let everybody in her family down. <laughs> she's disappointment. Like, she's, she didn't get anything out of it. Long story short, they find out that Tracy has not been coping well with, like, all the stuff that's happening in her life, and that's why she's been acting out in this way, and then her mom is there for her and, like, tries to be there for her more and, like, holds her and symbolizes the fact that they're gonna restore their, um, relationship, you know? It's like a beautiful film. Um, super beautiful. I love this film. I definitely give this film like a 10 out of 10. If I had to rate it, it is a masterpiece. I would put it in the same vein as films like Bully and um, not really Kids. Sometimes people say Kids, but I would say more cl closer to Bully. And like maybe I'll list a few other coming of age films. It, I could say it's similar to Moonlight. Oh, I had a huge question. A huge, huge question. This is like my number one question for people. What were the popular shoes when you were in middle school and high school? What were the popular backpacks? And then what is a popular like random style? So shoes, the top tier popular shoes in high school were Nike SBs for us and Jordans. And then backpacks, Jansport, black only. And then something else random. Mm. Oh my gosh, the Adidas soccer pants that like tapered in.